The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning to you here at 5 a.m. Thanks for waking up with us on this Thursday morning. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Alex Fisher. We have breaking news this morning. Firefighters are dousing intense flames at a home in East Bakersfield. Several fire crews at the home trying to put the flames out. It does appear to be under control at this time, which is good news. It appears a garage caught fire and spread to part of the home. A car was also destroyed in the blaze. We are still waiting to hear more information from fire officials about what happened. Both city and county fire crews were on the scene of another blaze in a vacant apartment building on Roberts Lane just west of Chester Avenue. This one appears to have broken out around midnight. No word on how the blaze started or if anyone was hurt. Also breaking overnight, police say a man is fighting for his life after a stabbing at Plans Park. Officers were called to the park at South 8th Street and Plans Road just after 7 p.m. last night for reports of a stabbing. Police say a group of people were a group of people was fighting in the park when the stabbing occurred. Six men were seen leaving the scene as officers arrived. The adult man was uh, a victim was found with multiple stab wounds on a sidewalk. He was taken to the hospital where he is currently in critical condition. No other identifying information was immediately available and the investigation continues this morning. If you have any information, you're asked to call police. Your time now is 504 and a man who was hit by a car while riding his bike was pronounced dead last night. The bicyclist was found on Oak Street around midnight. He was taken to a local hospital and he died. The driver stayed on scene and cooperated with police. Police say the driver showed no signs of impairment and speed was not a factor. And 17 Crime Watch this morning. The search continues for an inmate who allegedly assaulted a deputy and managed to escape custody. Deputies say 34 year old Marcus Rosales escaped custody Tuesday as he was being taken to a medical appointment in downtown Bakersfield. Rosales had been transported there in a KCSO van without shackles by a single sheriff's deputy. As the deputy was getting him out of the van, KCSO says Rosales threw a powdery substance in the deputy's face. Officials say Rosales then carjacked a nearby woman and took off. He has not been found since. Rosales is, was being held on multiple charges, including attempted murder and assault with a deadly weapon. And deputies say he should be considered dangerous. If you see him, call 911. Four people are behind bars today after a 16-year-old was shot in North Bakersfield. It happened around 4 o'clock Tuesday evening on 34th Street near Panama Street. Police say the teen was taken to the hospital and currently in stable condition. A woman who was standing nearby was also shot, but expected to survive. 19-year-old Joe Devers II, 19-year-old Terry Alva, 22-year-old Alan Moore, and, 17, and a 17-year-old man were all arrested in connection to the shooting. They are charged with attempted murder, gang participation, and weapon violations. Redcrest police are still searching for a missing man this morning. The situation described as critical. Take a look. This is a picture of 27 year old Anthony Miles. According to Ridgecrest PD, he was last seen near South Broadway Street and East Commercial Avenue. He's described as six feet tall, 190 pounds, wearing a white shirt and khaki colored shorts. If you've seen him, you're urged to call Ridgecrest PD at 760-499-5100. 506 now, and there's still no word this morning on the whereabouts of a couple goats stolen from Highland High School. School staff tell 17 News two men were seen breaking into the school's farm around 1.40 Monday morning. The men were reportedly driving a tan or silver SUV that you see right here when they jumped out, grabbed the goats and threw them into the back of the vehicle. The student raised goats are part of the school's Future Farmers of America program and were going to be shown at the Kern County Fair next month. Normally the fair has like a replacement date where you can enter in an animal and still have an opportunity to show even though it's not their animal. Unfortunately the entries for that is closed. So um, the students in question, the only way that they could show is if they get these actual animals back. Highland FFA alumni are now collecting donations for the two students that own the goats. Those interested can make a donation on Venmo to the address that you see on your screen that is at Highland Hyphen alumni FFA. 
The group says they'll be splitting the donations between the students to recoup losses and fund next year's project. Meantime, if you know anything about this case, you're asked to call the Kern High School District Police Department at 827-3218. Law enforcement vow to protect and serve, but last night their service took on a different meaning. Local law enforcement waited tables alongside servers at Black Angus Steakhouse. For service is part of a fundraiser called Tip a Cop. It seeks to benefit the Special Olympics. Funds will go toward helping local athletes gear up and train for the games. It's great to see them involved in the community, working with the servers and seeing them cheer on the athletes just every day in normal life. Special Olympics programs are entirely funded through donation. Special Olympics Kern County will be holding a volunteer event this Saturday from 9 to 11 a.m. at River Lakes Ranch. And happening today, Timbler Brewing Company is hosting its Save Water, Drink Beer event. The Kern County Farm Bureau is teaming up with the Water Association of Kern to highlight issues such as water that affects the ag industry. The event will feature food, music, raffles, and of course beer. Tickets are $20 for members, $25 for non-members, and the proceeds will benefit the Kern County Farm Bureau. Schools are starting later this year. Kids may love the extra sleep, but families and educators alike are dealing with the unintended consequences of this adjustment. 17th Chris Burton has the story. Well, it was meant to give students a bit more time to sleep, but as State Bill 328 goes into effect this school year, it's creating more than a few headaches for families and educators. It's been months and months of planning for the new school year. School districts in Kern spent the summer planning, scheduling, adapting to new start time guidelines. State legislation requiring later start times for middle and high schools goes into effect this school year. What might seem like a simple adjustment has wide ranging consequences for schools, students and families. This is going to impact our students and families and our teachers and school staff and our transportation. And so it has that trickle down effect. The Kern High School District needed to shift every one of its school schedules to fit the new rules. With sites now letting kids out 30 minutes to an hour later after school activities and sports might become before school activities on a case by case basis. Our athletic directors, our coaches, our school staff have really had to put their heads together, get creative, and really just be flexible. The biggest challenge for many districts? Transportation. The adjusted start times have forced large districts like KHSD and the Bakersfield City School District to reevaluate bus routes and schedules. But the routing has changed a little bit and also the times. So we encourage our families to take a look at that bus schedule before school starts next week. Officials across the county urging parents to double check school schedules before the year starts. Chris Burton, 17 News. Also in education news this morning, the California Resources Corporation presented a donation of more than $500,000 to Cal State Bakersfield yesterday as part of a commitment to carbon capture and uh, capture carbon and clean energy. Dr. Zian Yu Dong, the new dean of CSUB School of Natural Sciences, was on hand to accept the donation. CSUB President Le, uh, Lynette Zelezny says the donation will go a long way toward giving students the tools they need to make change. This will expose students to research scholarship to the disciplines that will be needed for the future of building new ways of producing energy. The California Resources Corporation has announced it will put a $500 million uh, into the projects in the Central Valley aimed at advancing carbon management and capture. The Victory Outreach Southwest Bakersfield Church is holding its annual Heart for the Community Backpack Giveaway this Friday. The church is partnering with New Arising Destiny Center for this free event. In addition to giving away backpacks, there will be live music, free haircuts, face painting, and more. It will be at Victory Outreach Church at 912 Newstein Road in Southwest Bakersfield. It's this Friday from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. For more information, you can call their office today at 837-4908. Donald Trump continues to be the focus of multiple criminal and civil investigations, pleading the fifth during a New York deposition yesterday. Supporters saying this is another witch hunt following the FBI raid of his Florida home. Jay Gray has more. Mr. Trump, can we have a word, sir? For the normally brash, outspoken former president, the last 24 hours or so have been defined by his silence. 
repeatedly invoking his Fifth Amendment right, refusing to answer questions during a deposition with New York's Attorney General, part of an ongoing civil investigation into the Trump family's business practices. And to this point, choosing not to request and release the warrant from the search and seizure at Mar-a-Lago, which would publicly outline the government's allegations against him. Still, the former president does have plenty to say online describing multiple ongoing investigations as attacks and politically fueled witch hunts and without providing any evidence suggesting federal agents had the opportunity to plant evidence during their search. Baseless speculation echoed by supporters. I think they just make stuff up. All of this amid growing indications it was a Trump insider who sparked the FBI's move on his Florida home. Donald Trump probably does have a snitch in his midst. There had to be somebody who was an insider that basically directed the FBI agents. Democrats on Capitol Hill putting their faith in the process. Justice is coming, you know, for the corrupt. And I am confident that when all is said and done, that the rule of law is going to prevail. The investigation, an issue that is dividing voters. No matter who you are, um, you're, you're going to be held accountable, hopefully. As the legal and political drama continues to unfold. And on the political side, many inside the former president's inner circle are apparently urging him to formally announce his 2024 campaign sooner rather than later. Jay Gray, NBC News, Washington. Also making news across the nation, the dispute between Texas Governor Greg Abbott and New York City's Mayor Eric Adams seems to have no end in sight as another group of migrants arrives in the Big Apple. Three buses carrying nearly 100 migrants rolled into New York City's Port Authority Wednesday. Mayor Adams blasted Abbott for sending the migrants without providing any information on when the buses were coming or how many people were on board. Abbott began sending migrants as a way to bring awareness to the illegal immigration crisis he says many border states are facing. So far, Texas has sent more than 5,000 asylum seekers to New York and Washington, D.C. Millions of kids now have college savings thanks to a new statewide initiative called CalKids. Through the program, students can get up to $1,500 and newborns can get up to $100. To qualify, kids must either be born in California on or after July 1st, 2022, or an eligible low-income public school student in grades 1 through 12 in California. Parents of newborns get a starting seed fund of $25. Those who register through the online portal get an additional $25. Linking the new account to an existing college savings account earns an extra $50. Students in low-income eligible public schools can get a starting fund of $500. Those who are homeless or in foster care can get an additional $500. In news around the world this morning, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says her trip to Taiwan sent a clear message and that China bears the sole responsibility for its negative reaction to the visit. China says it will continue seeking what it calls a peaceful reunification with Taiwan by any means necessary. If the cost of avoiding these types of provocative measures is to cede control of Taiwan to the People's Republic of China or to cede control of our travel schedules, that is not a price we are going to pay. Administration officials have not weighed in on whether that trip hurt U.S.-China relations. Both Democrats and Republicans have been vocal in their support for Speaker Pelosi's visit. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.